Hi everyone, welcome to Cybertrain.it. Wanted to let you know about an exciting opportunity we have coming up in June. From June 11th to June 15th, we'll be teaching a CISSP class in the Washington, D.C. area. Now, if you're not in Washington and would prefer to attend from the comfort of your own home and your bunny slippers with your cup of coffee uh, and your chihuahua sitting on your lap, you know who you are, uh, you're welcome to do so because we're now offering live online participation in the class, which means you'll be fully interactive. You'll be set up with a microphone. You can inject your questions. You can have your webcam so that we can see you and have that direct contact, but you don't have to trek all the way to D.C. or worry about the traffic. So uh, we'll be covering the new material. This course has been finalized at the end of March, which means we have the new subject matter that ISC Square has now uh, um uh, 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 rolled up into the curriculum, as well as we have a focus on the computer adaptive testing, which means the material that you get is going to focus on uh, the material that you would see on the exam, as well as the format. Uh, we'll be covering the eight domains, and if you've seen me on any of the, uh, the various videos that I've done, you know that I like to take IT concepts, make them break them down, and make them simple and easy to understand. The course isn't about me showing you how smart I am. It's about helping you understand the material and getting prepared for the exam. We'll talk about the mindset of CISSP because many people study hard for this test, go in and still fail because they're not thinking like ISC Square wants you to think about. We'll cover security and risk management, which is chapter one, but it is one of the most important topics on the entire exam because Every decision we make starts with risk management. If we don't properly understand how to assess risks and how to make good decisions, then our choices will be wrong. We won't properly assess the, the threat landscape and we'll make decisions based on what we used to do and what used to work instead of what's relevant and timely. We'll go into chapter two, talking about asset security. I mean, that's really what it's about, right? I've got assets, I need to protect them. So what are some ways that we can uh, assess our assets and make the appropriate decisions? We'll look at clearance and classification and hardening those assets. Then we move on to domain three, which is security engineering. Now, one of my favorite sections is cryptography and understanding the various elements of crypto. I teach crypto like you've never seen it before, like you're brand new to it, starting off with, this, with defining plain text, cipher text, What's an algorithm? What's a key? What's an initialization vector? What's a seed? And what's a salt? So that we can all learn from the same starting point. So many of these terms we throw around and use, although we may not have a good understanding for them. Uh, then the second part of the securing engineering chapter is security architecture and design. So ultimately the premise is I have to build security into my devices rather than test them and determine if they're secure. If I don't build for security, how am I going to get security? For so long, we've asked two questions. Does it work? Is it secure? Now our question has to be, does it work securely or does it work at all? Okay, then we're going to move into chapter four, identity and access management. Hot topic today. How do we provision user accounts? How do we make those accounts available? And how do we provide authentication and authorization for the various services that our user accounts will need? And this becomes complicated because now not only are we looking to provision identity and manage authentication within a domain, but we have to do this throughout the internet as we access the many different application, software applications that are out there. That's chapter four. Chapter five, we move into communications and network security. A lot of good information, starting with the very basics and jumping into looking at the OSI reference model. And then at each layer of the OSI reference model, really getting in there and talking about what services are performed, what hardware, what software accomplishes those services. And then ultimately we'll pull it all together and look at the big picture. We'll talk a little bit about WAN communication, VoIP, and then we'll wrap up by talking about the cloud as a whole. We move into chapter six, security assessment and testing. This is where we want to examine, is our network capable of withstanding an attack? 
So we'll talk about the various tools that we use. We'll talk about intrusion detection systems. We'll talk about vulnerability assessments and pen testing. We'll talk about honeypots and many of those other utilities that we use to keep ourselves safe. We'll move into chapter seven, security operations. Two big topics in security operations. First one, they go hand in hand, as you can tell. Redundancy and then continuity of the enterprise. Redundancy, let's avoid those single points of failure. Let's make sure that we have fault tolerance. Make sure that we have redundancy and resilience built in for the purpose of high availability. If you've ever heard the old phrase, don't put all your eggs in one basket, that's exactly what redundancy is about. And then we move into continuity of the enterprise, which means ultimately, no matter what, we keep on ticking. And we have to dis determine uh, how that we plan for the various types of interruptions that we might face what are the appropriate documents and what are their contents, and then how we go about choosing our teams for recovery and reconstitution. What should be contained in our plan? What scope do we cover? So a lot of good information there. And then we wrap things up with domain eight, which is software development security. Got to tell you the truth. That's where it is, right? I mean, if I were to ask you, why are we so dependent on firewalls and intrusion detection systems and perimeter security? It's because our software's weak. Our code is weak. It's written poorly. It's not written to be secure. It's written to function. And if you think about it, if I were to ask every one of you, have any of you ever sat through a development class or a programming class? You know, those old introduction to programming uh, courses. And if you go back and think about that, how much of that class was devoted to writing secure code, right? None of it, probably. You know, most of the courses out there for developers function, function, function. But if we can't function securely in today's world, we'd better be better off not to function at all, if you really think about it. So this particular section, I'm not going to teach you how to write secure code. I'm going to teach you how to manage a project with secure code as its priority. We're going to talk about the software development life cycle and uh, secure systems engineering processes so that we can ensure each step along the way security is our focus. All right. And by the time this five day course is complete, we're going to try to provide you every resource that you need in order to confidently take this exam and pass it. All right. And of course, everybody learns at a different pace. So we also have access to uh, recordings of the class. So if you want to go back and hear cryptography or you want to go back and hear, uh, you know, a lecture here, there, or the other, we're going to have those. We're going to have them provided for you. Part of it, so with, with the live uh, online, you'll have the exact same resources that our in-person attendees will have. So I'd love it if you'd come to cybertrain.it um, or our Facebook page, just search cybertrain.it and click to learn a little bit more about signing up and registering for this class. You want to get on the ball though, because it's coming up soon, June 11th. Hope to see you there.